Good morning. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. We're glad that you're here this morning. If you're here with us in person, then um, feel free to stand. <clears throat> We're going to open with some prayer, and then we'll continue worshiping with singing as well. Lord, we just bless you. We, we praise your name this morning. Um, we want to lift up uh, praises to you this morning as we remind ourselves of who you said you are and who we are because we have a relationship with you. And we invite your Holy Spirit to come and work in this place as we continue to worship you this morning. We just ask that anything that we brought into this room that would keep us or distract us from being able to really just focus on you this morning, that that would all just be laid aside. Holy Spirit, we want you to come. And we want to be able to just fix our eyes on you, to fix our hearts on you, to focus on you this morning. And we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you came in our place and that you paid our debt so that we could be in relationship with you and, and get to know the Father, that we would have the Holy Spirit living in us and that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead would live in our, in our bodies and give us power. And so we know that that's who we are in you and we're so thankful for that this morning, Lord Jesus. We invite your Holy Spirit to come um, even more this morning, that your power would just move in this place. Come and have your way this morning, Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, uh... 
is that we need you to be the miracle worker in our lives. You can't not be those things to us. And so we remind ourselves today that that is who you are over all the circumstances that feel like we don't know that you're working. You are working. You are working. You are working. You are working in a moment. You might work over a long period of time. You might do a miracle. You might use a doctor. You might intervene right in this service today. So we want hope to arise in our hearts this morning. And so we just call hope to arise in our hearts. We just ask, Lord, that you would let hope rise in our hearts this morning. That we would uh, just be able to lay aside that doubt that creeps in, the things that, um, you know, disappointment, the things that just happen over time. We just pray, Lord, that your hope would rise in our hearts this morning. We just ask for a little bit of hope, even if it's just a little bit. That's just the way that your kingdom works. You can do a miracle with a little bit of faith. And so we just ask that the Holy Spirit would breathe on our faith this morning for what you can do and who you are in our lives, God. stop. You never stop working. When I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. 
above it all and you're enthroned in your praises in our praises and we just are thankful for the opportunity to worship this morning God we're thankful for that we thank you thank you for what you're, you've already done and we thank for you for what you're going to do as well we thank you for each one of these um, brothers and sisters in the Lord that are here any of anyone that's watching online as well Lord we just thank you for them. We thank you for what you have for them, Lord. Thank you for what you have for us as well. God, I just invite your Holy Spirit to continue to move in this service. 
thank you that we can greet each other and say hi and, um, you know, walk in community with each other. And we ask for your blessing, too, on um, Pastor JJ as he, uh, he brings the word this morning. We thank you for your, for your word, for the Bible, and bringing that to life for us. We ask that you do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you are welcome to greet each other now for just a couple minutes. Um, feel free to say hi to somebody. Please say hi to somebody, even if it's only one person. morning, Hope Church Midway. Hello. Uh, my name is Grace Garcia. I'm the children's uh, ministry um, director downstairs. And I am glad to be up here today with you, filling in for Jen. Okay, let's pray for her family. She's in Arizona right now. And so I'm going to be doing the announcements. Uh, welcome, everybody. For those who are here for the first time, for those who come back from staying home, and those just in general. Amen. Good to see everybody's smiling faces this morning. So the uh, first announcement is um, prayer, okay? We know that um, everybody has needs, whatever they are. Could be mental, physical, financial, spiritual. And uh, we believe prayer works. We have heard countless stories of what God has done and continues to do. He's the same today, tomorrow. To yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So we have a prayer team who prays all week long, so you can notify us either by uh, email or if you have Pastor JJ's number, you can reach out to him. You can do it through um, several ways. Also, we have giving. There's four ways to give, in person, online, or through the app. If you're here in person, there's envelopes behind each chair with a pen, and there's offering bins in the back. You can drop it in there. And also, um, for those of you who came in, we're celebrating our four-year anniversary today. Amen. <laughs> Hope Church Midway. And so we gave everybody a little book. If you didn't get it, maybe you can get it on the way back. And also a card to fill out for uh, a t-shirt size to participate in our Hope Midway uh, family. And you could throw those in the offering bin as well. So for our fall events, we have midweek. We're back to uh, Bible study on Tuesday nights. Right now, we're digging deeper into the Beatitudes, which those are a lot of fun. We just had that series with the children recently, and it's very interesting to see blessed, what blessed means. Amen? Blessed thou shall be. All right? And next, we have the Youth Momentum Convention. So for your, our youth that are here, um, we want you to register before October 15th so that you can get the discount price. Mark here will be taking names of those who want to register in advance. It's going to be in Naperville, Illinois. November 19th and 20th. The next item is going to be um, October 1st. That was Friday. Okay. The next item is going to be our uh, Pumpkin Jamboree Parade, which is part of the community of Garfield Ridge. And if you want to participate, be at church here at 9 a.m. on Saturday. And if you're going to uh, register, I don't know, are we registering? No. Okay, we're registered. Okay, very good. And bring candy. We have a bin in the foyer for candy donations. We're starting to collect them now. Also, we're going to have a, a fall festival jamboree here at Hope Church Midway as well on the 31st. And we're going to have a petting zoo. We're going to have pony rides, games, live music, and so much more. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a short time, but it's for the community and our church community as well. It's going to be um, out here, and we're going to, if you have... Anybody here who wants to help, they can see me, okay? And uh, we can help s sign you up to um, be a uh, volunteer. All right. And with that, I'm going to, is there an another one? No, that's it, right? Okay. I'm going to pass it to Pastor JJ. Thank you, 
way to pitch hit for Jen, so <laughs> she's happy in that. Right on. Well, we want to let you know, again, as, uh, um, as uh, Graciela already just said, you know, we're grateful to celebrate four years, and uh, the little gift that we have for you with the shirt that we're uh, having you drop it off in the back there, that's for us to do for a lot of different things, not just to have a shirt that says Hope Church Midway, but when we do a lot of stuff in the community to allow them to uh, be able to see who we are as well. One thing that we're going to be doing in the community that we haven't announced yet, uh, but we want you to start to get the word out, because uh, this is going to be a good word of mouth type thing, is we're going to be doing sp something special for the officers and their families on October 23rd. Um, we've had the, the pleasure of getting involved in prayer in the park at Hell Park at 7 p.m. all throughout the summer, and we're actually going to be doing it once a month now. That's actually going to happen tomorrow at 7 p.m., so those who would like to go to that, um, that'll be tomorrow at 7. Um, but one of the things that we saw when we were there is we got to get to know a lot of different officers and um, through unfortunate tragedies of uh, suicide and then the death of Officer French and other things like that, we, we got together a lot within the community. There's a lot of officers that live and, and work in this area, and we talked to a bunch of them, and when we were praying over them, a lot of them were saying, yeah, they hadn't felt any support at all. And um, some of them were even, you know, you saw tears in their eyes when we were just praying over them, and we're like, this is insane that someone who's going out every day, putting their life on the line, is not even realizing that we're caring for them as a community. And so uh, we made a promise that we were going to do something, and uh, you know, my, my feeling, prayer without uh, action is pointless, and so we say we're praying for the officers, we also want to bless them and their families. And so October 23rd, uh, we're going to be at Kennedy High School um, in the parking lot, and we're going to have uh, all kinds of stuff for their family. We're going to have jump houses, we're going to have food, petting zoo, pony rides, all kinds of different things, face painting, painting rocks, all this other kind of stuff. Um, all these things are going to be down there from 10 to 1 on the 23rd. And uh, so if you'd like to help, that would be awesome. We could definitely use your help uh, and definitely use your prayers for that. But we also want you to get the word out too. So we realize that a lot of people who live in this area don't work for District 8. Now we're working with District 8 with their faith um, um, community uh, uh, action group that, that's there. So we're working with them to get the word out in the 8th district, which encompasses this area here. But again, a lot of officers that live in Garfield Ridge, Clarion, and, and the Midway area in general don't necessarily work for 8. So we're also wanting to get the word out to them as well. So any officers that you know, we're going to have all this stuff online this week um, that you guys can digitally share. Uh, feel free to share it with them. There's a QR code that they can sign up for so we know how much food to buy. How many of you know that's an important thing? Um, so they can go right to the QR code. It's Sign Up Genius, which our church is familiar with. Um, but they're going to be uh, using that uh, to sign up for it. And we think it's going to be an awesome time. Uh, we're expecting a lot of people to come out to not just have a good time there, but we're also giving away like raffle prizes and stuff like that so their families can do things together, so they can have a good opportunity to have a break. We're going to have a ton of Bibles there. We're going to have prayer there. Um, we're going to be reaching out in many different ways because the help is not just something of saying, hey, we're praying for you and that's it. We want to actually come out and help within the community. Sound good? All right, so uh, let's keep that in prayer. We're going to pray right now, then we're going to show a quick video, but we just want to pray for this event and uh, thank God for what he's done in these four years. God, we thank you so much, God, for helping us to set up, God, with different community people, God, for what we're looking to do on the 23rd. God, it's amazing to think four years ago, God, what you would do in this church, and we've been praying for great ways of reaching out in this community and reaching out to different people, and and God, you've helped out so much. God, we've seen your, your guidance and your wisdom all the way through this. And God, we pray as we're coming together, God, celebrating this four years. God, we pray that the next four years are even more fruitful than what we've seen. God, I say this all the time that the only reason that our church is able to do anything is because of what, of what you are doing. God, it's been you that has done everything. All glory goes to you, God. All honor goes to you. There's not one person who can say, we had a great plan, or we did this, or we did that. God, your fingerprints are all over everything these last four years, God. And we pray that you'd be just as involved, if not more so, in our lives, God, these next years as well. We thank you. God, we, we dedicate our church to you again today. This is your house. Do with it. Do with us as you will. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. When we think of worship, most of us think of this. Or we may even think of this. Or maybe something like this. But did you know that worship can also look like this?
if we're really honest, some of us end up worshiping the wrong things. But there is only one who is truly worthy of worship. It's a great thing to be reminded about, right? Well, and you might be saying, where you started a series last week, and if you were here, that's great. If you weren't, check it out online. Uh, we're doing start a series called Wholeness and Fullness. And you might say, well, what does worship have to do with wholeness and fullness? And allow me to explain this. So last week, we talked about the healing of our soul. And what our soul is, our mind, our will, our emotions, our personality, these are the things that the Bible says and encompasses what our soul is made of. And we asked a question last week, is your soul whole? Do you find that wholeness in there? Is there pieces that seem to be missing, things that have happened over the last years or maybe during the pandemic and other things that have affected you, to, uh, that have affected your soul? So we're talking about wholeness then, but today we want to talk about fullness. Now, so we're going to ask the question, what are we full of? What are we full of? <laughs> and I'll leave it there. <laughs> But we're looking at this, our souls have a way of emptying out with different things in life, right? There's different things that affect us. There's different things that affect us in many different ways. So for instance, let's see what's actually filling us up. A lot of people, especially the last couple of years, have been filled with news and, and social media as far as coming out with information left and right. And what they've seen by being filled with that is they're usually filled with bitterness or anger, Right? If that's what you're constantly allowed to be filled in with, that's what's going to be coming out of you. Some people have been full of escapism. Whatever I can do to escape the reality and the things that I'm dealing with, I'm going to fill my life up with that. But then we see those people are actually filled with anxiety because they never actually react to what's really in their needs, the real need that they have in there. And so they're just getting filled in with the wrong things and just having this anxiety that's building up. Even good things, as the uh, video was showing, some things that we can worship that seem good to people on the outside and are good in and of themselves. Taking a vacation, you know, having time with family or having a relationship, things like that. These things can be great and they are good things, but if that's what we're filling our life with fully, if that's our biggest uh, focus in our life, what happens when that thing gets taken away? We realize how empty we truly are if we're allowing these other things to fill our life. And so we need to see, well, what do we need to fill our lives with? What are we filling our souls with? See, worship is a way of filling our lives with God. That's what worship helps us to do. It helps us to fill our lives with God by seeing who he is. Now, this word worship, the word that Jesus mainly used in, in Greek when he was talking about worship was a way of saying that you were bending down and kissing the ground. That's essentially what that means. Worship means kissing the the ground. Now you might say, why in the world would Jesus use kissing the ground as the word for worship? Like, what does that mean? How does that make sense? And in our own modern sensibilities, that seems to kind of be some strange thing. We well, see what they would do. First of all, um, when they would um, go down, it was a sign of status. They're saying, you're up here and I know where I'm at. I'm being honest in this moment of saying, I know who you are and I know where I'm at. See, it's very easy for us to say, okay, well, God, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this for me, and we're really treating God like he's down on his knees, and he has to be following us. We see, worship helps us remember, hey, he's here. We have to remember our status. It's not that we're low, 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 like he doesn't care about us, and that gets to the next part. Because the next part is they would do that, they would kiss the ground to show affection. I'm not going to kiss the ground. <laughs> but they would go down, they would show that opportunity of them actually kissing the ground to show affection. To show this isn't something they were being forced to do. It's something they wanted to do out of love. It was out of a loving way of having this worship to this other person. So yes, you're up here and I'm down here, but I'm showing this love that I have for you, this honor. If they didn't kiss the ground, it was just like, okay, this is what I got to do. I got to show that I got to bow. But kissing the ground was that showing of affection. And all this posture, when they had themselves down, they were kissing the ground and they were low down there, it was a sign of reverence of awe, saying, I'm just amazed to be in this person's presence. This is the word that Jesus would use when he described worship. He would describe it in that way. So what does that mean? You know, it might be saying, well, how do we understand about this? What does this mean for us? Well, we understand why we respond in this way in worship when we understand who we follow. 
If you want to turn to Revelation chapter 4, we're going to be in chapter 4 and 5 today. If you want to look in your Bibles or look in your phones or look up here. Uh, but I want us to understand why we react in this way, why worship is said in this way. So Revelation 4 verse 3, it just describes God. It says, the one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones, like jasper and carnelian. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. Twenty-four thrones surrounded him, and twenty-four elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. Put a pin on that. We'll come back to that later. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. When we are talking to God, that's who we're talking to. I think it's very easy for us to get that twisted, to, to kind of forget exactly who we're talking to. You know, it's easy for us to remember a painting maybe you saw when you were younger or, or you know, just a Bible story and kind of think of Jesus in, like from a movie or something like that and kind of get our minds on this is who we're talking to. But the Bible is clear. This isn't the only time God has talked about in this way. We see this in multiple times in the Bible of who he is and what he looks like. And all the authors are just trying to come up and like, look, it's just, it's amazing. It's like rubies. It's like they're trying to put all the, the amazing things in there that they can't even do. Their words cannot even express how incredible God is. And so when you think about that, well, how else would we respond? I mean, if we were right in the throne room of God right now, how else would we respond? Hey, God, how's it going? You see it. Yeah. Nice the throne. Uh, yeah, the emerald thing, that's good. You know, I mean, what, what would, we would all, bam, without a doubt. I and mean, that's why the Bible is clear. It says when any, everybody sees God, every knee will bend, every tongue will confess, you are Lord. Okay, you are God. You would hit it. You would automatically go in worship. You see, there's a difference when it says every knee will bow. There's a difference between every knee will bow in cowardness, in worry, in trepidation, and there's a difference between being bowing in worship. And as believers, we don't bow saying, oh man, God's going to smite me. We don't have to do that. We get to worship and say, yes, God, I realize your status. You know, maybe you've, you've had times where you just kind of went through your daily routine of praying and reading the Bible and you've just been like, all right, God, and, and you're there and you haven't realized who he is and and that helps you to remember his status, the greatness of who he is. Maybe you need to have some time in, in your prayer time where you're worshiping. You're saying, God, I just want to thank you for the love. Because you have all that great status, yet you came to earth. You came to earth to die for me, to die on the cross, to allow us to have a relationship with that great of God. You came here, and I just want to thank you and show my love and my affection for you. Maybe you need to have that reverence, that awe. Because there's times that we can be saved for a while and kind of miss you know, who we're actually talking to and just become kind of second nature instead of really having that reverence, that awe of who God is and saying, I'm able to talk to him. Because of what Jesus did, I'm able to go boldly in front of the throne. I don't have to come out here and cower. I come down here in honor of who he is, realizing who he is, and then I can speak to him personally. That should cause us to worship. I think a lot of times we miss that. We miss a lot of that of what God has for us. And what happens with this? Well, it's important for us. We don't want to take God for granted. See, worship starts when we find out who's in front of us. See, kissing the ground, that's the least we can do. If we actually really thought about who God is. If we realize who he is. Not just some voice like, okay, I'm talking to somebody in my head or something else like that. Or not just a historical Jesus who came and died and rose again. And, okay, that's who he is and this is the, the ideas. Not just going through religious ritual and this is what you do because this just shows your love. But actually realizing who he is. And now we have that opportunity to talk to him freely every day. Our reaction should be worship. It should be worship. You might say, well, what does this have to do with our souls being filled? Well, I want us to look at what worship looks like in heaven. And it's a great example of what we should be doing here on earth. Let's look at Revelation chapter 5, the next chapter over. It says, and they sang in a mighty chorus, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. 
And then I heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang blessing and honor and glory and power to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living, living beings said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the Lamb. This is what is happening in heaven. They don't take God for granted. They're saying, when we see who God is, this is our response this is how they have to. These are people who are surrounding by God at all times, yet this is their response when they're around him, when they see him. This is exactly what they do. The next step that they take, they make sure they, they go for it. So when we find out who's in front of us, this is the important thing we need to see. We won't just pray, we'll worship. And, and I'll tell you, this is one of those sermons that I, when I, so I was writing it, God's like, and conviction, conviction, conviction. I'll be honest. As I looked at my own prayer life, and my prayer life is probably a lot like yours, you know, where I'm praying. I'm like, okay, God, these are the needs, these are the help, this, this is what I need in your wisdom, and all this other kind of stuff. And, and I'm praying all these things through, and I don't usually take that pause and just worship. Maybe before or after. I, I haven't really taken that time. I mean, yes, I thank God at the very beginning of prayers and stuff like that, but I'm like, am I really worshiping him? And, and God challenged me about this this week. So are you taking that time to worship? Is this the picture that I have in my mind? Because I'm missing something if I'm missing the worship. We're all missing something if we're only praying and we're not worshiping. We're missing the filling that God gives us. See, God wants to fill us up, and if all we're doing is just having these needs and just sharing these needs, and that's it, and we're not giving time for God to speak to us, we're going to miss what he has for us. It's important to look into this, because I've, I've seen people look at this wrong, and they'll say, when it says, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power, to receive all these things. What this word received means in Greek, in Greek means he's already taken hold of it, he has it. God doesn't need something from us in worship. God isn't saying, hey, I need to really be reminded who I am. As I've said this a million times, God doesn't have a complex and say, I need everybody to tell me how great I am. God knows who he is. It's up to us to have the benefit of seeing who he is. That benefits us. Worship doesn't benefit him. It benefits us. See, God doesn't need these things from us as a power and the wisdom, the riches, the strength. No, he gives these things to us. Think about what Philippians 4.19 says. And this is the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. That word there of supply all of our needs means he's going to fill you up. That word literally means he's going to fill you says, I realize that you are empty, and God wants to fill you. He wants to fill and to help out your needs. Now, this isn't some, you know, some weird thing of saying, hey, there's some prosperity gospel, so go ahead and buy a bunch of stuff, and God's going to take care of all your bills. You know, that's not biblical. God's against debt. That's another story altogether. Let's look at the Old Testament. You know? But what he's saying is, I have the fulfilling of your needs. What bigger needs do we have than the needs in our souls? Yes, he'll help us out with our physical needs. He says, I've never seen him. Uh, the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He will help us out with our needs. But he's saying one of our biggest needs, our biggest need, I would argue over anything that I've seen in all of my travels around the world and everything, what I've seen, the biggest need for everyone in worldwide is a need of our souls to be filled. That is the biggest need universally. doesn't matter where you're at. doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or if you have a little bit of money. Everybody has that same need, saying, I need to be filled in my life. Now, that idea of him saying from his riches, that, that word there in Greek means going from a higher plane to a lower plane. And I love that because, again, remember, in worship, we're down here, and he's not saying, hey, you little peon. He's saying, I got something for my child. Let me hand this out to you. The riches that I have to you, these riches, this filling of our soul. So we want to look at those riches and see what's available for our souls today. So we're going to look at Revelation 5 again, so hopefully you kept your finger there. So let's look at what he's talking about, the riches that are available. First one is power. A word power there means having the ability. Having the ability. So what does that mean? God's ability should lessen our anxiety. God's ability should lessen our anxiety. Why are we worrying? Now you might say, well, Pastor JJ, you've talked about that the last couple of months, you know, and that's very true. Because I don't think, and this is something that God just keeps on bringing up, because I think this is something we still need to really work on. And God was showing me something in, as I was preparing for this. Is a lot of times when we're preparing for this, our hearts are praying against this anxiety, saying, well, God, I know all that you have. I, I know all that you're doing, but are we still just holding on to that stress? Are we still holding on to that pressure after our prayer? 
I mean, what's filling us? That, that stress and anxiety, or is, or is it worship? Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. See, God can do more than we give him credit for. But a lot of times we keep it in prayer, but then we bring that stuff with us. We keep it in prayer and say, okay, God, I know you can do whatever you can. I know that you have all this great power, but I don't know if that power is available in my life. But when we worship, we start to realize who God is. We start to realize that power is available for us as well through the Holy Spirit. That power is available. It's not just something that we say, well, God, you're here and I'm down here and I, I hope you just throw me a little nugget. Again, those are the, the riches that God has. It says, hey, the power that I have is for my children as well. I'm going to work in your life too. I want to work in your life. And he is available. He's able to help us out. But unfortunately, in prayer, if we just leave it in prayer, we don't have that time of praise, our anxiety levels will still be high. But once we start to worship and realize who we're praying to, that's when everything changes and we're able to give it over to God. So look at the next part there, riches. Now, the riches here in Greek, it's way more than wealth or anything else like that we try to put it. This is really what's talking of spiritual riches that God has for us. What do we mean by this? God knows that our tanks will run low. He knows that our souls are going to run low. So it's like I realize that you're going to go on empty. And it's funny, I was, I was talking to a friend this last week, and we were both joking around how in college uh, we both kind of ran our, our tanks on empty a lot because we just didn't have money. <laughs> and that we both kind of messed up our cars. You know, because we didn't really, you know, I had a buck, and I'm like, all right, now I can go this many miles. I know I can do this. And, and uh, you know, and that's just kind of how I did. And I, I was kept on running it, running it like that. And eventually my car just went, forget you, and shut down and died. I mean, you know, your souls are going to feel that same way. We continue to run on empty and just say, okay, God, Sunday morning, oh, it's great to be here in your house, and maybe you're able to come on a Tuesday. You know, it's great to be here and get filled up again, but, you know, you, you can't just run on empty the rest of the week. Just put a couple bucks in your, in your tank and say, hey, that's going to last me. It's going to affect your car. It's going to affect your soul. But God says, I want to fill you up every single day, and he does this in our worship, in our time with him together. So what do our souls need? Romans 15, 13. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. That you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, these are these spiritual riches that God has for us. Joy, peace, hope available. Anybody need joy, peace, and hope in your life? Okay, great. I'm glad you're alive and really to be honest in church. These are those spiritual riches that says these things are low in your soul. We can't just run on empty. We can't just put a couple bucks in from the Sunday morning. It says, at all times, this can be in your tank. This is what the Spirit gives us, that source of hope. The Holy Spirit speaks this into our life. God is that source. That's why we worship. We're like, God, I'm so grateful that I don't have to come up with hope and peace and everything in myself because if I look around the rest of the world, that ain't going to happen. If I'm looking at everything else, you know what? My hope's going to go down. My joy is going to go down. My peace is going to go down. But once I look at God, that's where these things get filled into our lives, and we see a change that happens only through him. And he wants us to see this and see that difference today. Another thing that we need to get filled with is wisdom. A word wisdom means clarity. I think we all need to say, I need to see which step I need to take. Anybody else need to have that prayer? I need to see which step to take. What's the next thing I need to do in my life? What's the next thing that God has for me? So how does God speak this into our life? How does he fill us up? When, because again, if we don't know those steps, a lot of times we're, we're dealing with this issue of anxiety. So what, what do we do at this time? God does this in John 16, 13, explains how he fills us up. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard, and he will tell you about the future. So God will show us the true path to take so we're not just wandering in the dark. So this is how worship comes in during this time. A lot of times we'll be praying, saying, God, I need to know which step to take. I need to know what your will is. I need to know what you have for my life. And we'll have this deep prayer from our souls. But then we just walk away instead of actually pausing and letting God speak. And worship, when we stop and just think and say, okay, this is who God is. And I can realize his status. And I can realize his love. And I can realize the awe that I have to be around him. When I realize who's in front of me, well, then I'm going to worship. That's going to cause my anxiety levels to go down, and I could just be in his presence and be grateful. Well, now I'm ready to hear. So how many of you know 
that you can't really hear from somebody else if you're talking all the time, right? Now, I'm a talker. I know, shock, you know, <laughs> you know, but it's funny because when I first was uh, doing small group uh, ministry, my wife would tell me, and she nudges me every now and then as well, but I would talk the whole time. She's like, hey, you need to just, you know, let other people talk. <laughs> it's supposed to be a discussion. I'm like, all right, you got it. Uh, you know, but it's important. We can't hear from God if all it is is God, 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 here's, here's it is, here's it is, here's it is. I need your help, I need your help, I need your wisdom, I need to know what step to take. Thank you, goodbye. When did we leave time for him to talk? Well, I'm going to look into his word. That's going to help me out. Absolutely. That's, going to, that's God speaking to us. But having that pause and worship every day, that allows him to really speak to our soul. That goes past everything else. That goes right into our soul to help to fill us up with his wisdom. So I want to encourage you to look for that, rich that, God, that riches that God has for us. One of our biggest things our souls need is strength. Strength. So how do we get this inner strength in our life, because our, our souls, when they're feeling empty, they're feeling weak. So how do we get this inner strength in our life? I love this quote. It's not from me. It's from somebody else. It says this, it's not enough to be in God's presence. I need his presence in me. So it's, it's one thing to say, hey, God, I'm, I'm so grateful to be around you, and I'm so grateful to worship you, and I'm so grateful to know you are there, and, and I'm here, and everything else. And, but worship goes beyond that. So worship goes beyond that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't just stay there in heaven. The Holy Spirit comes in our life. It says, you don't have to be there by yourself. I am in you. I give you that opportunity. See, a lot of times people will just try to avoid life to get that strength. As we're feeling weak, we'll try to do anything we can to avoid it. We'll try to find different things to occupy our mind, different things to occupy our time, and all these other things so that we don't have to look at what is actually in front of us and the weakness that we have. We'll try to mask it. God says he doesn't want us to mask it. He wants us to get strength to be able to move through it. And I love it. And there's a great uh, verse on this. It talks about Ephesians 5.18. It says, do not be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sing psalms and hymns, hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. He's saying, hey, I don't want you to try to avoid life. But when you actually come in this opportunity of, of having this relationship with God, you will worship. You will worship. And this is a great thing for us to see. When I was looking at this, I'm like, God, I need more of this in my life as I was going through this. Because I see that I'm doing way more praying than I'm doing worshiping. Way more. So if all my response is continuing to pray, continuing to pray, and I'm not worshiping, well, how much is the Spirit really working in my life? How much is He giving me the strength that I need to move forward? How much am I giving the opportunity to strengthen me? And we all have to ask that question. Because again, this is natural. So this is a natural response that happens in our hearts when we're worshiping God. See, worship comes naturally from a heart that's filled with God. So we're finally only having prayer and not having any worship. We're going to say, God, I need to be refilled by you. Amen? And that's something that we need to ask for. That's something we need to speak for. You might say, well, what do we need to be refilled with? We need to be refilled with God. And that happens in the Holy Spirit. Only He can fill our soul's need. That's it. Everything else, I mean, there's some wonderful verses. We, got, we gave you guys a book um, that you guys could have to see God's wonderful words as your gift um, from us, you know, that you can look at His word and that can comfort us but the Holy Spirit speaks through his word. His Holy Spirit speaks to us during the week and speaks to us and helps to fill us up so we're not just getting information, but we're getting what our soul truly needs. And that's what God helps us to do. Only he could fill that. Revelation 4, I told you to put a pin on that whole idea, the, the sevenfold spirit of God. Well, that's talking about when it says sevenfold spirit, Revelation is filled with uh, numbers and using that as metaphors and stuff like that. Seven just means complete. So saying the completeness of the Holy Spirit was there. See, the completeness of the Holy Spirit is what we need in our lives. That's what our soul is asking for. It says you're feeling incomplete. Now allow yourself to be complete with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that you're ever going to feel the total completeness that you're seeing. The lack that we have is only filled with the Spirit. Anything else is like putting into your gas tank water. It's not going to help. In fact, it's going to hurt it. That's why he said, hey, don't do all these other stuff. Like, like, I mean, the example he uses there is people who are just getting drunk to avoid everything else. He says, hey, that's like throwing water in your gas tank. Actually, be filled with the Spirit. You're going to start to run right. 
So whatever else we've been avoiding and trying to put everything else for our strength, for our hope, and something else to fill our lives, none of that is ever going to match what the Spirit can do inside of us. We were made for that. Now, it's important to know the Bible is clear. The Holy Spirit comes in our life the moment we say, God, I want to follow you. I'm, I'm sorry for the things I've done before. I'm sorry for the, the things that I've had. Help me to have a new mindset, to go in a new direction. I believe that Jesus came, died, and rose again. At that moment, when we do that, the Holy Spirit comes in our lives, and that's a great thing, right? That God comes into our lives and says, I'm filling you up. That's awesome. But you know what happens a lot after that? Someone's like, oh, right, that's great. I gave my life to the Lord. I'm following him. That's awesome. And then after a while, they're like, it just doesn't seem the same. God, that was a great time at the beginning, but it, it doesn't seem the same. Well, because the Holy Spirit came into life, but the Bible's clear. You need to be filled with the Spirit. Not just Spirit there one time, but allow him to continue to go over our life. In fact, it talks about being refilled. We see this as the disciples all the time in Acts when they were going through different things and hard times and like, Holy Spirit, we need more of you. And, says, and it filled them again. And they were going through other situations. God, I need your help. And it filled them again. The Holy Spirit continued to work in their life. It wasn't just a one-time event at salvation. It wasn't another one-time event where, God, where the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were filled with the Spirit. They continued to need to be filled over and over again. It's important for us to see this. And the Spirit helps us in this worship when we remember who God is. How's it helps us? How's it help us in this time? See, Christians can pour themselves out and run dry. They can run empty. That's very easy for Christians to do. Well, we love other people. We're sharing that love. We're sharing that help with everybody else, and we can run dry. We can run empty. God's saying, I want to fill you up again. And again, when we had that worship and say, God, I just want to focus in on you. I know that you want me to love others, but I need to start with loving you and knowing who you are. Holy Spirit, I need more of you in my life so I can give out more of you and not just give up myself. Because if we give up ourselves, guess what? You're going to run dry, and anything that you helped out with isn't going to match for much after time. But the Spirit continues to move in our life, continues to allow us to be filled out so we're able to pour out things of God. We also see that we get holes from different things in life that can drain us. People who have gone through sickness, who've gone through death, who've gone through really hard times, maybe lost their job, things like that. These things put holes in our life, and we can start to drain within our souls. God's saying, I want to help to fill you up. I want to help to build you up, as we talked about last week, but I also want to fill you up to overflowing because he realized that we can be drained from life. When we worship, we're able to concentrate on that. Say, God, this is where I'm at. See, worship comes from an honest place. So we're supposed to worship in spirit and truth. It's not just us worshiping by saying, I'm looking at lines up here on a screen and we're doing some Christian karaoke, all right? But it's saying, well, God, what does this mean in my life? Because my soul needs to know this. My soul needs to know what I actually need. I need to speak this from my heart and speak this in honest place. We also see that we need this, this filled again because we could become stagnant. We could become stagnant. And I think that happens so often with Christians. It's very easy to do. We get into our own routine. All right, this is my Bible time. This is my reading time. This is my prayer time. I'm going to move on. And that just becomes that set time. And, or maybe you don't even have that, which I pray you need to start that. But, you know, maybe we just get stagnant with it instead of saying, well, God, what do you have for me today that's above and beyond this time that I set aside for you? Because if all we're setting aside for God is 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever that might be, well, there's a whole day that God wants to move in our lives. He wants to stir us up. The Spirit wants to move in our life. But if you're only giving him a little bit of time, guess what? You're going to become stagnant. You're going to say, well, why, what's going on? Something needs to be moved in my life. I need to see something more. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to show us every day, things he has for us. You might say, well, how do we get refilled? How does this happen? Jesus describes this in Luke chapter 11, verse 10. It says, for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I've seen this verse used so often in so many different places, but Jesus was specifically talking about the Holy Spirit, specifically talking about this. See, when we're saying, God, I need the Holy Spirit in my life, there's not some weird formula, hey, repeat words after me or whatever, or some special prayer that you read about in the Bible that happens with this. Jesus describes exactly what it is. Ask. Holy Spirit, I need you in my life. I need you in a great way. I need to be filled by you to overflow, and I need more of you. And what else does he say? He says, seek. If you're here, over here in the altar, we're going to be opening up in just a second. And you're saying, I've been praying. I've been waiting for what God has. But you know what? It didn't happen in that, you know, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it may be. Well, that's okay. Continue to seek. Continue to seek what God has for you until you see what the Spirit wants to do in your life. And then knock. You're not going to get unless you knock over there. You're not going to have him answer the door unless you're actually really trying to see it with your whole heart. 
It's not just saying, well, okay, I mean, come for a prayer and hopefully God does something. No, actually go there expecting something. When you knock on the door, you're expecting someone to answer, right? Why else would you be doing that? And that's the same thing. You're coming with expectation that the Spirit will do something great in your life. So if you need God's power, you need his riches, you need his wisdom, you need his strength, it's available. It starts in worship where we just push everything else aside and just concentrate on who God is, concentrate on his status, concentrate on that affection, on that love, and just be in awe and reverence. But if we need that today, let's ask for it. Just do exactly what Jesus said. Ask, seek, and knock. As Pastor Vanessa comes up, you might be here today, and, and as we're going to open up the altars here, we're going to say goodbye to the, to the uh, online people here in just a second, but we want to have time for everyone just to have that opportunity to ask, to seek, and to knock. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, it starts off, obviously, with prayer. The Bible says in, in, Ch- in James, he says, well, you have not because you don't ask. Or you ask with the wrong motives. So if you want the Holy Spirit, we need to ask. We need to just ask and say, God, I want more of you. You might be saying, well, is there some special thing that I need to learn about the Holy Spirit or anything else like that? You don't see that in the Bible. You never see a time where someone is preaching saying, hey, let me tell you everything about the Holy Spirit. They say, hey, do you want the Holy Spirit? And they came over, they prayed for them, they got the Holy Spirit. It was that easy. We've made it complicated because we want to make God complicated. God's like, no, no, I'm, I'm easy. Ask, seek, knock. There we go. Jesus made it simple. So if we're going to come here and you want to come down and say, God, I just need to be filled with the Spirit, just come with that open heart. Come with that open heart. That's all that it's asked. That's all it's asked, just to come with that open heart. But it might be saying, well, after I come up here and I pray and, I, and I'm asking and I'm seeking, what, what do I do in that meantime? What, what, what do I do as, after I'm waiting? Because I know that's, that's something you might be wondering. I know I would wonder that if I were in your shoes. Well, I want to encourage you. Look at Revelation 5 again. It talks about what we give God. So there's other things of who God is, but what we give God that helps us to remember who he is. And I want you to, to encourage you to do this as you come up. It talks about honor that God has. Honor is value. We understand the value of who God is, how great he is, and it helps us to see the value of who you are. One of my favorite worship team's bands is called Worth Dying For. It's the greatest name for a band. And what it means is to say, well, Jesus said you are worth dying for. I care so much about you. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter where you are in your present. God has a plan and hope for your future. And you are worth that dying for. You are worth being filled with the Spirit. You're worth this. You're not coming up here and saying, God, I know I'm so low. I'm so low. No, again, it's affection. It's in that awe and this part of that worship. Saying, God, I realize who you are. I realize it talks about giving God glory. That, that word glory means a good opinion. See, the enemy is going to want you just to concentrate on everything else bad in the world. All the bad things that are happening in your circumstances. We see giving God glory and saying, well, God, I'm remembering how good you are. And that's what I'm asking for. I'm not asking, God, can you come in here because all these bad things are happening. You say, no, God, I want to see your goodness. I just want to concentrate on that right now because everything else, that good God is going to help out with you in general. We just need to concentrate on his goodness, on giving him that glory. The last part we see there is the praise that God has. That word praise there in Greek is where we get the word eulogy from. It's listing out the good things that happen in this person's life. So as we're worshiping God, list out the great things of who God is in your life. Say, God, I'm grateful I'm able to come here freely and hear about who you are. I'm grateful that I'm able to come here and and have salvation through you. That you've spoken in my life, that you saved me. I'm grateful that you're helping me out every single day. No matter how hard your life is right now, we can list reasons to be grateful. And this will help us as we're worshiping God. This will help us to stay focused on Him as we're praying for the Spirit to move in a great way. So we can all stand today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, before we open up the altar for people who are coming saying, I want to be filled or I want to be refilled, I want to ask this question. It starts with a relationship with Jesus. So Jesus was so grateful for what the Holy Spirit was going to do. He said, it's great that I leave because the Holy Spirit is going to do amazing things in your life. But we also hear that Jesus is the baptizer. He's the one who helps to fill us with the Spirit. So if we want to see what the Spirit has, we've got to give our life over to Jesus to begin with. So if you're here today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, saying, I want to follow Jesus. I want to say I, that I'm 
I'm sorry for the things that I've done before. I want him to help me to go in a new direction. I want to follow him. I believe that he came. I believe he died. I believe he rose again. If that's you here, I want you just to raise your hand. We want to pray with you about that time, about what God wants to do in your life. So if that's you, feel free to raise your hand. God, we are so grateful. So grateful that we're able to praise such an amazing God, to lift up such an amazing God. God, to read of, of who you are and God, to read about their, your power, God, the riches that you have, God, these things that you already hold, that you don't need anything from us, but yet you want to give these things to us because you love us as your children. It's amazing to think about. So God, I pray right now, your word says that if anyone's needing the spirit, they need to just ask. God, we just need to be able to find, be able to seek. God, and we are need to knock. So I pray that you would help us to do that today. God, that we would take time, we set aside time here in the service of this specific for you to have your way. So God, we're going to come expectantly. We're going to come praying and asking for the Holy Spirit. But God, we're also going to come in worship, knowing who you are, knowing that this is going to fill us up every day, remembering who you are, taking that pause. Thank you so much in Jesus Christ's name. So we're going to open up the altars in just a second. As I said this last week, God really put this on my heart. Quite frankly, if I didn't have my altar time with God this last week, my behind would be down here praying. So don't think if you're coming down here, I'm looking at you any different because my behind would be down here. I'm saying, if you're saying, my soul needs to be filled, I'm needing more of God, come down. The prayer team, after they pray, the pray themselves, are going to come around and start praying with you. Because you know what? The prayer time, we all need to be filled too, right? So we're going to pray as well. We're going to come around. We're going to start praying. We believe that God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Just say, Holy Spirit, I need more of you. I need to be filled. Ask, seek, knock. Do that and be amazed by what God has. Amen? So we're going to open up the altars right now. Feel free to come down. We can space ourselves out. We have enough space in here. Feel free to space yourself out. If you don't feel too comfortable, I get it. Feel free to stay right where you're sitting. But feel free to come down.